welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. On March 20th, 2024, Premier Scott Moe and the governing Saskatchewan party tabled Saskatchewan's 2024-2025 provincial budget. Now, according to the province, quote, this budget addresses the challenges of a growing province by reinvesting the benefits of growth in the areas that matter most to Saskatchewan people, education, health, and our communities, end quote. Deputy Premier and Finance Minister Donna Harpower tabled the budget that includes, according to the province, the largest ever increase in school operating funding, the largest ever increase in health funding, and the largest ever increase in municipal revenue sharing for Saskatchewan communities. Now, we caught up with President Randy Golden of the Saskatchewan Urban Municipalities Association for her reaction to this provincial budget. Now, as a prominent advocate for municipal interest in the province, President Golden's perspective promises to shed light on the implications of this provincial budget leading up to the next Saskatchewan provincial election scheduled for later this year. This is Municipal Affairs. President Golden, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by talking about the most recent provincial budget, the last provincial budget of the Scott Moe government prior to this upcoming fall provincial election. Uh, from your standpoint as the uh, head and president of SUMA, what was your initial reactions to this budget? Well, first of all, when it was introduced, when the uh, finance minister, Donna Harpower, this will be her last budget that she's going to be bringing down. She has announced that she will not be running again. So, um, you know, it was a, um, you know, it was it was a, a day to see a lot of our ministers who won't be running again and 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 uh, Donna Harpower presenting her budget. So, you know, we've worked really well with her and we want to thank her for that. But when she uh, rose to present the budget and talked about the theme of their budget, which was classrooms, care, and communities. So uh, we recognize that that was, a, that was a, a really something for us to say as an accomplishment, to be, to be highlighted in the theme of the budget this year, uh, our communities. And as you know, SUMA represents, you know, over 400 urban communities across the province. So we were pleased about that. There were many things in the uh, budget that we were pleased with. A couple things that we, you know, we, we would like to continue our discussions with the provincial government. But overall, um, you know, we were, we were pleased. One of the big things that I took away from this, and I want to get your reaction, is the increase in funding to the municipal revenue sharing. This has got to be a win-win for uh, SUMA because you guys have been advocating for to remove the freeze and start increasing it because of the challenges that municipalities across your province have been facing. Uh, when you heard this uh, announcement, uh, I'm assuming, like I said, you were probably pleased about it, weren't you? We were pleased about that and we were pleased that, you know, they continue with the agreement that we have in place. So municipalities here in Saskatchewan, we get 0.75% uh, of one point of the PST. You know, and there was talk about different changes coming about. And we know that in Canada, we're very unique um, to receive this type of predictable, sustainable funding. Um, in the agreement, we've agreed that it's that 0.75. So, you know, um, in the past, two years ago, we saw our municipalities um, see a decrease. To my municipality, that meant about $150,000 of a decrease. So this increase was was very pleasant to see. And, you know, the, the pool is rising from um, $682 million to $729.5 million dollars. Um, so, you know, it's it's a significant increase. It's what our municipalities have been asking for. It's uh, funding that we can use uh, towards, you know, the infrastructure deficit that we see across all communities across Canada. So very pleased about that. We're going to be sitting down and, and having the discussions, you know, going through the budget line by line. But that was something that we were very pleased and I'm speaking about that and I'm I'm thanking the provincial government. I will be thanking the premier when he is at our convention in a couple three weeks. Uh, but you know, there's always things that we can that we need to continue advocating for. 
So I'm going to ask a political question because you brought up the premier here for a second. So I'm going to have to ask the political question. Um, does this go far enough, though? Because in, in this budget, uh, Finance Minister Donna Harper did mention that the uh, the I believe the population is expected to hit 1.25 million people this year in the province of Saskatchewan. I, I've spoken to your members. I hear what they're talking about. Is this enough or is this just a good first step in the uh, pathway to working alongside the province for communities? Well, Chris, you took the words out of my mouth because I've done some um, advocacy in the last day, and I've said this is a good first step. Uh, for instance, our Saskatchewan uh, Assessment Management Agency received uh, a bump up of $900,000 after not seeing any funding for five years. So this is the foundation of our tax policies. This is how we collect the tax policy, the tax dollars that we need, the property tax. This is how the provincial government receives the education portion. It's through what SAMA does. They've had no increase in funding in five years. So what has happened is the municipal requ uh, requisitions have gone up. So the municipalities are now footing the higher portion of the bill than what we had agreed on. So a first step indeed. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting because we still have some work to do. And, and I know when you spoke with our members, you heard about infrastructure. You also heard about one of our cornerstone advocacy pieces, things that are happening across our province to our communities, large, small, east, west, north, south is mental health and addictions. So we're, we have we have to continue with that work. That has not been, in my mind, um, looked at carefully enough by the provincial government. They did increase the SIS program, the Saskatchewan um, uh, Assistance, Saskatch SIS, Saskatchewan. Now I'm struggling with that. that acronym. Too many acronyms in this in, yeah. in the world of municipal yeah. politics. But I want to talk about healthcare, if you don't mind, for a second, yeah. because this is a priority. Uh, you, alongside your sister organization, SARM, have been advocating for more support for smaller communities across the province. Uh, did you get an indication from this budget, but also from the Minister of Rural Health and or even the Minister of Health that help is on the way for smaller communities who are struggling to find even a family doctor to put in their communities? The uh, the government is committed to uh, facility building. They're building bricks and mortar, and that's all fine. We need that. But we need the people to staff those facilities. So whether they're primary health care, they're, they're health centers, um, you know, they're the um, treatment beds that the province is, uh, you know, committed to bringing in in the next five years, 500 treatment beds. All well and good, but you need people in our communities, the the emergency, the the paramedics, all of those things that we have been asking for, uh, nurse practitioners, all the professional healthcare uh, staff. Uh, we don't think that uh, we're even close to being there yet, and we need to continue that advocacy. And and when I say we don't think we're there yet, it's not uh, it's not the SUMA board or SUMA executive sitting around and saying we're not there yet. This is coming directly from our members, and they're being very vocal about it. So um, in convention coming up, whether you're in the dialogue with the ministers or whether you're at the bear pit session, I'm sure we're going to be hearing about that. Um, one last thing I want to talk about before we turn to that convention that is upcoming here in the second week of April is one area that I found quite, I, I don't want to say disturbing, but I found quite, uh, raised my eyebrow a little bit, and that is the funding of highways in northern Saskatchewan. Uh, I, I have spoken to members from La Ronge, I've spoken to members from La Cree, uh, from across northern Saskatchewan while I was at the convention last year, uh, Assuma convention last year in Saskatoon, and I heard infrastructure, highways, roads are a concern for a lot of rural, a lot of municipal in northern Saskatchewan. Are you upset that they're clawing back some of the infrastructure highway road repairs for this year and next year in this budget? I can say to you, Chris, that that is definitely going to be something we're going to be addressing. Uh, there is a $16 million decrease in the funds going to the northern transportation system. And, and you hit the nail on the head again. Um, it's, it's highways, 
its airports, its ice roads, uh, and that's a huge concern to us. It's a concern because of public safety. Um, if someone needs help, uh, if there's an emergency, um, you know, how how is that going to happen? And the other thing that we're concerned about is, you know, our northern communities play a huge role in the economic uh, growth and development of our province. And how is that going to work? Uh, you know, where are the cuts being made? Uh, we need to have more uh, discussions around that. And definitely we'll bring in our northern members. Uh, we have a northern member on our board, um, but we will be having those discussions uh, very, very soon. So we understand the cut that's been made. Some other uh, issues that we have around transportation, Chris, is the fact that our regional uh, airports, so the airport like in Yorkton, but in the airports that really are the feeders for the whole areas around us, um, that funding has remained the same for many years at $850,000. That is not sufficient uh, to help the communities now that are funding that on our own, when you're talking runways, lights, communication, um, it's just not sufficient. And that has not been, uh, had any increase in many years. So, you know, um, this budget we feel has hit the mark on several places, but it's really missed the mark on other places. And um, as our SUMA staff is going to be going through line by line, uh, we're going to be <laughs> bringing this up to the premier and the ministers. But I would like to say, um, one of the things that I appreciate is the changes and the funding that's going to be made to breast cancer services, to the treatment, to the diagnostics. Uh, we uh, see that there's going to be a breast cancer care uh, center that's going to be added. And I've heard from women across this province um, saying uh, they can't get to Calgary to, because that's where they have been being sent now to Calgary if you can believe this, to get the services that they need. This is a, this is a very important issue uh, to, to women across our province. And uh, we will be asking how soon will this be rectified? How soon are they gonna be working on this? It's part of you know, um, all of the concerns we have uh, around our healthcare system and really servicing the people, providing the care that our residents need. I have one last question before we turn to the convention, and it's a question I've asked every single one of your uh, partner, brother and sister organizations, whether it be Alberta Municipalities, uh, the Union of uh, Municipalities of New Brunswick, but are, are municipalities better off today than they were prior to this budget? Um, you know, and I'll have those conversations with our, with our uh, municipalities, but I'm thinking about the city of Yorkton and uh, I always relate back to my community and I saw the difficult uh, budget that we had to had to work through and the budget that came down that saw an increase in our property taxes, both for capital and operating. Um, would I say we're better off? No, I don't think we are because we also did some projecting for our capital needs, our infrastructure needs. And when we added everything up, it was $152 million. That's that just that's just not a go. And I know that, uh, you know, if we sit down and ask all the communities, you know, what do they need in the short term and in the long term, that would continue. We're also seeing now that municipalities, and I'm sure you've heard this from all the other organizations, there's more that we need uh, that that has been downloaded, and I don't like that word. It's been the it's been now it's the responsibility now of municipalities, and we're seeing that in mental health and addictions, a huge concern, and things like um, you know a thirty dollar increase to to our uh, social uh, insurance um, for the people that are the most vulnerable, thirty dollars a month increase. That's what we're seeing. You know the inflation. I relate that to that's five cartons of milk a month. That's not helping pay the rent. Um, and they're on in our streets. There are residents, and um, in a in a in a country like Canada, that should not be happening. 
I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I want to talk about the other elephant in the room for a second, and that is the upcoming SUMA convention 2024 in Regina. I am looking forward to being there. Are you looking forward to seeing all your members across the Saskatchewan converge in one place and have these discussions about what we've just talked about, about the budget, about the upcoming uh, year, up upcoming municipal elections that are taking place in November? Are you excited? I'm very excited because one thing that you didn't mention is uh, the work that we've been doing for the past two and a half years on our governance review that our members asked us uh, to undertake because they they feel that they want uh, better and more ways to engage. So we've been going through this for two and a half years, Chris, and I'm so excited because at our AGM, I mean, who gets excited about an AGM, right? Well, right we're going to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be having this and uh, hearing about what direction our uh, members uh, want to take this because it's in their hands. We've done the engagement. We've done the consultations. Uh, we've put together um, the the uh, motions that will change our bylaws. Uh, and now it's up to the members to to tell us which way they want to go. What do they want to see? So that's happening at convention too. So talk about a jam packed convention. Oh my gosh. I'm assuming because it is an election year provincially, you will have representatives from all parties there as well. Uh, I, I've looked at the agenda and it seems like the Minister of uh, uh, Local Governance will be there. The uh, Premier will be giving a speech on the second day, if I'm not mistaken. The uh, opposition leader will be giving a speech. Is it a good time for your members to interact with the provincial leaders ahead of this upcoming provincial election as well? Absolutely. There's not a better a better opportunity. And that's why, uh, you know, um, so many of our members will be there because they have the opportunity to do that. There's also the, the opportunity to have the dialogue with ministers. So the ministers that we are most engaged with would be transportation, health, highways, corrections and policing. Uh, and they're going to be there to answer the questions. We also have the opportunity for the members to talk directly to SUMA for the past several years where we've started having a dialogue with uh, with SUMA and our uh, advocacy, advocacy committees. So they can uh, come to our meetings. We'll do an overview of what we do and we need to hear back from them. Like, what are you hearing? What are you seeing on the ground? And I'm gonna quote, the president of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, Scott Pierce, when he said, we are the government of proximity. This is where everything happens, right here in our municipalities. So um, this is, there's never been a better time for our members. And you know, it's interesting because we have members right across this, this province. So whether you're from a resort village, a village, of uh, you know the the VP of of villages um, Mike Strachan population two hundred and I think twenty in Torquay to our largest cities to our towns and to our northern municipalities who you know sometimes don't have those opportunities that I hope will be there to to speak with Suma to engage with us but to engage with the uh, with the provincial um, you know leadership whether it's the party in governance or whether it's the opposition. President, thank you so much for doing this. It's always a pleasure to catch up with you. I can't wait to see you again in Regina. I'm looking forward. Hopefully we can have a nice uh, coffee. I'm looking forward to all the events and meeting the members again and sitting down and chatting with them. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much, Chris, for this opportunity to really get excited about what we're doing here in Saskatchewan. Now, if this episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews and our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage from coast to coast to coast, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, please consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, 
And most importantly, and as always, just keep talking.